Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe and like button. Also hit that notification bell for more videos. Let's begin. Felix the Cat Mitchell Born Felix Wayne Mitchell Jr. on August 23, 1954 in Oakland, California. He grew up in the San Antonio Village Housing Projects on 69th Avenue. Mitchell would not make it through high school, eventually dropping out. Shortly after, he created an organization called My Other Brother, a.k.a. the 6ix9ine Mob, or MOB, which is still active in the Bay Area to this day. The group quickly began to succeed after Mitchell connected with L.A. Kingpin Tootie Reese, who helped with the distribution of heroin. Reese also helped Mitchell make connections in Los Angeles as well as Detroit. The mob had control of the Northern California drug trade, and this didn't come without a price. Centered in and around San Antonio Villas and Acorn Apartments with housing projects, Mitchell's 6 9 mob ruled the robust heroin market in Oakland and San Francisco in the late 1970s. An upstart group known as The Family was led by R&B singer-turned-dope man, Milton Mickey Moe Moore. Felix's organization was challenged for the throne by Moore's family gang at the beginning of the following decade. Highlighting the killing spree was the grisly triple homicide of family drug gang members Ricky the Rocket Walker, his younger brother Roger Red Walker, and their sister-in-law Sandy Adamson. On August 6, 1980, the war for the local drug game didn't cease for years. The Walker brothers and Adamson were found slain on the morning of August 7, 1980 by a jogger on the grassy slope near Skyline Boulevard in a hilly section of an Oakland municipal park called Colorado Trail. They were strangled and shot to death. Red Walker, 18, and Adamson, 31, were discovered with plastic bags over their heads and died of asphyxiation. 26-year-old Ricky Walker died from two bullet wounds to the back of his skull, killed execution style. Another war would eventually break out during this period with Funktown, USA, led by Harvey Whissington. In order to maintain control over their turf, the 6ix9ine mob utilized many techniques that have now become the basis of the modern drug trade. These techniques included the use of children as delivery agents and spotters along with drive-by shootings to punish both their enemies and their disobedient clients. Even with the wars going on, Mitchell's drug business was incredibly successful and it was estimated Mitchell was earning anywhere between $400,000 to $1 million a month. With his drug wealth, Felix lived lavishly, throwing parties, buying expensive cars, and purchasing fancy clothing. Additionally, he shared his income with local youth and community programs. Mitchell is still viewed to this day as a local folk hero. Like many before him, Mitchell's run would eventually come to an end. Mitchell was targeted by local and federal law enforcement and was eventually arrested in 1985. Federal witnesses testified that members of Mitchell's inner circle bragged of their involvement in the murders of the Walkers and Adamson. Mitchell told an associate while on a trip to Los Angeles during the first week of August in 1980 to create an alibi and avoid the heat from the string of hips that had tipped off that month and placed his 6ix9ine mob under even further scrutiny from law enforcement. A year later, on August 21st, 1986, at Leavenworth Penitentiary, a fellow inmate murdered Mitchell. Mitchell died two days before his 32nd birthday. Felix Mitchell's funeral followed a week later on August 29th, 1986. The amount of money spent and the incredible number of onlookers garnered national attention. The funeral procession, which included four Rolls Royces, multiple limousines, and a horse-drawn carriage, along with the $6,000 coffin, was viewed by an estimated 8,000 mourners along the route. Many law enforcement supporters used the event as proof of the significant impact drugs were having on the country, and particularly on vulnerable, impoverished neighborhoods in cities like Oakland. Mitchell's incarceration and death did not lead to the destruction of the heroin industry. Rather, both the level and scope of crime and volume of drugs on the streets of Oakland and other East Bay communities increased heavily after his funeral. This became known as the Felix Mitchell Paradox. Without Mitchell maintaining control over the market, it quickly spun out of control and resulted in even further greater growth and more violence. Mitchell's criminal convictions were overturned by a federal judge on technicalities a few years after his death. And with this, I ask you, in the case of Felix the Cat Mitchell, does crime pay?